Hey there guys, welcome back to 6 Straight V8, this is Chris, Garrett's behind the camera today. We're going to be showing you how to do an oil change on a 1964 Dodge Dart with a 225 cubic inch motor. So, first thing you're going to do is you're going to take this off here. This is a type of breather, but it also serves as an oil cap. This is going to be where we're going to add our oil to. And real quick, on these old motors, it's real easy to get to. We're going to show you where you're going to find your oil filter. That filter is an STPS8A. We're going to be saving it for last after we get all the oil out. So we're going to head down to the bottom side, and we're going to show you how to get the drain bolt out. Should be a three quarter inch socket that you're going to need, and you're going to want to make sure you have a couple of half inch uh, either felt or uh, plastic washers to put underneath the bolt, or a new drain bolt if you prefer. I'm going to be using the same one. So we'll get to it. All right, so now that we've jacked it up, in this case, we just drove it up on some ramps. We're going to get this drain bolt out. So we got our three-speed manual transmission back here we got our oil pan directly to in the center ish of the uh, body here <clears throat> we're gonna grab our ratchet and our three-quarter inch socket and we're gonna pop it on here and we're gonna start to loosen this baby up I haven't driven a whole lot on this oil but this is a engine that is at least 134,000 miles and 57 years old. So we wanna treat her right. So as you can see, the oil's not horrible, but it's still leaking. And I also wanna change it out. We're gonna be using a 530 today and money shot. <laughs> Here's the drain plug with the washer. You can see it's not that long. This is a nylon washer, I think. It's gonna need replacing. It was causing a slow leak at the bottom of my pan over winter and my driveway is covered now. So we're gonna remedy that. So we're gonna let this drain out and pop the new Gasket on that bolt and we'll plug her back in and we'll show you how to do the filter. All right, so we got that new washer on there and we got just a little drip drip here. So we're gonna go ahead and start hand tightening it first. Back in our oil pan here. And after I get this in, I'm gonna clean everything up a little bit because it's good to not have burning oil smell coming into the cab our three-quarter inch ratchet and we're gonna tighten it down to tight that way we get a good seal with our gasket here on the bolt and then I'm gonna go just quarter turn more and we shouldn't have any more oil leakage and now we're gonna go up top I'm going to show you how to do the filter and start putting some oil in. All right, so we got our 15 millimeter or our 15 flute 93 millimeter wrench down there, and we're going to get her loose. Now, I was using a 10,000 mile filter, and I have not gone 10,000 miles, so I could leave it, but I believe in doing everything right the first time so we're gonna take this off now make sure you have your oil plan switched over so you catch all of the stuff that's left over in the filter shouldn't be a ton but there is going to be some this is where if you have a nicer paint job on your car you're gonna want to be a little bit more ginger with it but come up to the side you can see that filter still got a lot of clean oil in it but we're gonna just go ahead and switch her out so we're gonna put our new filter on hand tight but first 
we're gonna apply some fresh motor oil. Right now we're using STP because I'm a poor boy. And we're using 530 because that's what some of the folks on the forums recommend. Now, Dodge themselves recommended a 1040, a 540, or even a 1540, depending on your temperature ranges back in the day. And with these older engines, you can go anyway. I tend to do either a 530 or a 1030, personal preference. Uh, you can also use diesel motor oil because it is a little bit thicker and it helps lube the older gaskets a little bit better, but this is what we got. So we're gonna take our oil on our finger, just like I did there. Make sure we have a good wet seal on that gasket. And I do a little bit on the threads too. And then we're gonna come down here There you go. That's where you're taking this. You're gonna take it to the side of the spark plug here. And of course you can't pre-fill this one since it's upside down. You cut it up straight down. I don't like to. You can do that trick Garrett was showing you where you back it up and then go forward. But this one's pretty straightforward. And it's also right next to your distributor here too, in case you're ever wondering. Now, we want to make sure we don't cross thread this because they don't make these engines anymore. They made them up until the late 80s, early 90s. And they put these slant sixes in everything from police cars to industrial farm equipment. They had a couple different sizes. This one's a 225, they did a 170, and uh, another one that I can't think of right offhand, but these are the most common. So, now that we got our filter on there, hand tight, did another twist about a quarter way, and I'll tighten it a little bit more with the filter wrench here in a moment. We're gonna go ahead and start adding our oil. So we got our 530 here, and these older cars, the, bre the breather is also where you add the oil, so we're just going to go right on top here. And this is a conventional. Generally speaking, on cars older than 1990, and depending on the engine, you don't want to use full synthetic motor oils on them because they will leak past the seals because... The rear main seal in this one, I believe, was made out of a type of rope. They call them rope seals. Uh, they are made with a fiber that is oil resistant to the older motor oils. Now what can happen is if you do synthetics in these older motors is it can bleed past those older gaskets and you have a front main seal leak or a rear main seal leak, which sucks. You end up burning oil car smells bad, you got a puddle in the driveway, it's just no good. But, in this case, I don't really have to worry about that. So we got that there topped off. We're gonna go ahead and put our breather back on, we'll wipe the motor up. And we'll give her a crank over once she's back level on the ground. Yeah. 